Hello, word workers! It is I once again, and I'm back for another research related episode only here at WordWorks by Shelika. Today, let us talk about the three research frameworks. Here are our key objectives today. First one, differentiate the three research frameworks, theoretical, conceptual, and research paradigm. And lastly, identify the purpose and features of each framework. Let us first dissect the terms concept and framework. So the word concept denotes an abstraction based on the characteristics of a perceived reality. Moreover, it is also a name we give to observations and events. And lastly, it is a label we put on a phenomenon that enables us to link separate observations and to make generalizations. So to put it simply, a concept is a name or a label of a certain phenomenon and in research, this applies to our variables. Let us now define what a framework is. So according to Miles and Huberman in 1994, page 18, it is a written or visual presentation that explains either graphically or in narrative form the main things to be studied, the key factors, the concepts or variables, and most importantly, the presumed relationship among them. So take note that a framework is either a graphical or a textual representation of something. Now, let us differentiate the conceptual framework and the theoretical framework in terms of what we include or involve in them. So for the conceptual framework, it includes the synthesis of theories and empirical events. So a researcher may opine that his or her research problem cannot meaningfully be researched in reference to only one theory or concepts resident within one theory. So in such cases, the researcher may have to synthesize the existing views in the literature concerning a given situation, both theoretical and from empirical findings. The synthesis may be called a model or conceptual framework, which essentially represents an integrated way of looking at the problem. So this one is from Lear and Smith in 1999. So in short, the conceptual framework involves the theories and what has been established in the related literature. Whereas for the theoretical framework, it involves the very theory that a researcher chooses to guide him or her in his or her research. So a theoretical framework is actually the application of a theory or a set of concepts drawn from one and the same theory to offer an explanation of an event or shed some light on a particular phenomenon or research problem. So I hope that's clear. Now, let us get the contrast between the conceptual framework and the research paradigm. Now, in content, the conceptual framework includes the variables, factors, and concepts, and their presumed relationship. However, the research paradigm includes the specific research methodology. So, the research paradigm often takes the form of IPO, or input process output where the input is oftentimes an intervention now the process being the implementation or administration of the input and the output is the expected outcome of the two so in some research cultures I mean, let me just use the term research cultures. Since the underlying theories have already been included in the conceptual framework the researchers are only required to design these two so the conceptual framework and the research paradigm. So let me further discuss the other utilities of the conceptual framework. Number one, conceptual frameworks provide researchers with the ability to move beyond descriptions of what to explanations of why and how. So the what question is simply for the identification of what the variables are, while the why and how are questions of relationships and methodology. The conceptual framework can actually give all these information either graphically or textually. Next one, 
research uh, framework or the conceptual framework also provide a means of setting out an explanation set that might be used to define and make sense of the data that flow from the research question. So to put it simply, we know for a fact that research questions reflect the variables and ultimately their presumed relationships. Whenever we ask, is there a significant relationship between a and B, or is there a significant difference between C and D? So hence, these elements are also reflected in the conceptual framework and more because we also interpret the presumed relationship of the variables using an existing theory and the theories from empirical findings or RRLs. So it's like a granola bar. The nuts and the seeds in the granola bar are the variables and their presumed relationship is the sugar. Okay, uh, the sugar that binds them all together to form the bar is the theory. Okay, so that's that. Next one, a filtering tool for selection of appropriate research questions and related data collection method. So a conceptual framework is also helpful in laying out which instrument and in research design must be used. Since the researcher is, you know, trying to establish a certain relationship among the variables, it is also his task to select the most appropriate data collection in order to prove such. Fourth one, it is also a reference point or structure for the discussion of the literature, methodology, and results. So chapter 4 or generally data presentation, interpretation, and analysis is all about um, the comparison and the contrast between the current and the established findings from the related literature. So more so, new discoveries may be explained in the light of what has been presented in the conceptual framework. So it's all about going back and forth for chapter 4. So you can also go back to your conceptual framework, what you have already claimed in your conceptual framework. And lastly, so the boundaries of the work is also presented in the conceptual framework because obviously, since the framework presents only the variables of the research as well as the theories involved, it also implicitly speaks about the limitations, right? So let us now talk about what goes, what actually goes into the conceptual framework. Number one, we have the key concepts or the variables, relationships, the theories, and the research background. Now, why is the research background included? Some researchers also note that the specific aspects of the research, such as the respondents, research locale, or implicit hypothesis in the framework. That's the reason why you are allowed to give the readers a glimpse of your research background through your conceptual framework. Now, it's actually up to the researcher how is he going to do that. Next one. So we have the general forms of the conceptual framework. Uh, the first one is the process framework and the second one is the content framework. So the process framework sets out the stages through which an action moves from initiation to conclusion. So these relate to the question how. Whereas the content framework sets out the variables and possibly the relationship with the relative strengths. Uh, how related is it between them and together they answer the question why. So as you can see here, the process framework serves as the role of the research paradigm as it involves the actions of methodology, hence the IPO model. This only means that the research paradigm is a type of the conceptual framework. So the content framework can either be the conceptual or the theoretical framework since they answer the whys of a phenomenon. So that is it for this episode. I hope you have learned a thing or two. See you in class next time here at WordWorks by Shalika. Thank you!